Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today we are going to make a little clutch. This is going to be a very easy pattern to follow and you are going to be able to make your own pattern in your own size. So not only do you get to use your own fabric choices, you can choose your sizes. Let's get started. I'm going to use this kimono silk fabric and it's going to be just a little bit quilted and for the quilting I'm going to use this kimono silk thread from Superior Threads. And what's really nice about a silk thread is number one, it has a beautiful shine. It's very thin, it's lint free, it's washable. It's a very nice thread to use. And when you do use the silk thread, I would recommend that you use a 70-10 top stitch needle. And to sew the bag together, I'm just going to use a masterpiece thread and also in the bobbin. And because I'm making a bag, I want it to have some stability. So I'm going to use this Annie Soft and Stable. It's very soft, but it's firm, so it holds the shape very well. I'm also going to use a little magnetic closure. Now you can use a button or you could even use Velcro. I'm just going to use the little magnetic closure. The other thing you're going to need is you need a bowl, and that's going to give you the round corners. So what we're going to do is make the pattern right from the soft and stable. So you need to get a size that you're going to want your bag to be made out of. Now this is 13 by 21 and a half inches. And make sure the edges are all squared up. No little jiggly edges at this point. They really need to be straight because this is going to be your pattern. Take your soft and stable and fold it into three because you're going to need the body and you need the flap that's going to go over the purse. So the flap has to be just a little bit smaller than the bag. So you're going to know that holding this, this is going to be the size of the bag. And then from there, you need to mark the insides as to where your fold lines are going to be. And I've actually written top flap so I know to keep myself straight. Fold this down and pin it. Now I'm going to want the bottom of my bag rounded and I also want the top flap rounded. So I'm going to get out my old trusty cereal bowl. I'm going to just draw the rounded edges on my two bottom pieces and my two top pieces. I want to put a little dart in the corner of the bag and I'm going to do it before I cut this off and it's really easy to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a one inch square in the corner. By doing that, that's going to be able to set your 45 degree angle. So put your ruler from the corner up through that point of the square and just draw a line. Now from the curve that you've already drawn, draw the line right up to an inch and a half and make a mark. From that inch and a half mark, you're going to go down to that one inch that you drew, and you're going to go to the other one inch that you drew. And that's kind of how it's gonna look. And that's all you're going to need to do to make this dart. And this really will give the bag a really pretty shape. So the next thing will be just cutting that out. You're gonna cut the first shape that you did, which was your bowl. Then you're gonna cut out this V part. So that's the shape that you have. There's your round and there's that V that you drew. And do that on the other side of the bag. And I'm going to cut off that round curve at the top of the flap. And I won't need to put a dart in there. So there's the shape of my bag. This is the bottom, the fold is here, my rounded edges, my two darts. This is my flap, it's going to come over and it's going to match here. The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to put where my little magnetic piece is going to go because I'm going to sew it right onto this soft and stable. So I need to find the center of the bag. Fold your flap in half and you're able to mark that center line and mark an inch and a half. And that's where my magnetic closure is going to go. To find the placement of the other side of where the magnet goes, fold the bag just as it's supposed to be done. Then you're going to be able to just roll this back until you find your mark and you're going to be able to mark the spot. So now I have both spots marked. So to sew these magnets on, it's really easy. First of all, pin them in the position you want 
and you're going to set your machine to a zigzag that does not move. So you're going to have a width, but you're not going to have any length. And you're just going to zigzag, pick it up, and zigzag again. And that is what your zigzags are going to look like. To try to sew all the way around, the magnet will want to get stuck onto your machine, well, because it's metal. So just do a zigzag, pick it up, move it, do a zigzag. My magnets match, and the bag is the shape that I like. Now I get to sew the fabric on. Put this on top of my fabric that I want for the front of the bag. And well, make sure you definitely have the front. And then you need to attach these two layers together. You can pin them together, or you can use a spray adhesive and just to hold them together temporarily. And don't worry about the extra fabric on the outside because you'll trim it down after. The other thing you need to do is make sure that you take the magnetic closures and mark them on your good side. And I just like to use a piece of painter's tape and I put it right where that mark is so that I don't go near that area with my sewing machine needle because if you hit that metal, you will break your sewing machine needle. So now I'm able to take this to the machine and do just a little bit of quilting so that I can hold those layers together. And this is where I'm going to use that beautiful kimono silk thread. So the quilting has been done. The next thing would be to do a small zigzag and hold the two layers together as you are doing it. And you can do this before you trim off the extra. So I've done a zigzag all the way around, keeping the zig and zag right on the soft and stable because next I'm going to trim off all the extra fabric. But if you need to press it, this is the time now to press it. The outside of the purse is done. This will be the pattern for your lining. So take your bag body and lie it on top of the fabric that you want as the lining and then trace all the way around. The lining has been cut out and I like to press it, but you're going to press it right sides together because after all that is how the bag is going to be. And I'm going to put a really easy pocket in this and it's going to be two pockets, but it'll only take one piece. So I'm going to want a piece that's 12 and a half inches by 15 inches. So fold the fabric in half lengthwise so you have the longest piece here and start sew right to the one corner down, leave a little opening and then sew back. Then you're going to take this and turn it right side out and just press it flat. Now this pocket is going to go in the center of your bag and here's the flap. You want to have two inches up here free. Then the bag is going to actually go right into the flap. And there's a reason for that. I know you're going to think to stop the pocket here, and well, you can. But by doing this, when the flap is closed, it actually makes that pocket seal itself so nothing can fall out of this side of the pocket. So a straight line right across where the bottom of the bag would be and that way you would have two separate pockets and just do two straight rows of stitching. Now take this and press it exactly how you had it with the first press mark. Now one more thing that I like to do and this is optional is when I open the bag I like to have something very nice for me to see. So at the top here, you can put an embroidery. If you don't have an embroidery machine, well, you can buy some iron-on appliques and just iron them right on there so when you open the bag, you get to see something pretty. Now to sew the bags together. Just fold the bag back onto itself and stitch all the way up to the top, stopping here, back stitching. And you're going to have this space here, that's fine. Just skip it and do the same here. Now we need to sew this dart. Match up those darts. You can have one seam going in one direction, one in the other, and stitch right along that seam. Now sew the front of the bag the same as you did the lining. So the outside of the bag has been sewn and it gives us a round look. Now we have to put the lining in the bag. The right sides will need to be together. Take the inside and slide it in. And 
match up your seams. Now you're going to start on one end and you are going to sew stopping right there at that seam. Then go from the center again over and stopping right at that seam. Now you will need to leave a little space here because this is where you're going to have to turn the bag right side out. Do you see how I stopped before I ran over that seam? I've stopped and started there. Now to sew the flaps together, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to start in that one seam, sew all the way around, stopping again in that same point on the other side. Now you're able to turn the bag right side out. So press the bag so that the lining is into the lining side and the top is into the top. And then you're going to top stitch the flap and the opening here. And by doing that, you will be able to tuck in the opening here, or you can sew it by hand. Now I'm going to share one more tip. If you're having problems sewing on the machine because the magnet keeps wanting to catch on the plate of the sewing machine, just take another magnet, put the magnet over top, and it will attach itself to this magnet and leave your machine alone. So you have a beautiful hand clutch. It has a nice bottom on it so that you can actually put stuff in it. It has a nice shape and there are no seams other than the sides. It makes a beautiful evening bag or you could make it in denim and have a lot of fun with it. It's a very quick and easy bag to make but it doesn't really look that easy. Because of the shape it really does look a lot more complicated but there's only two pieces. You can make this in any size and you can use any fabric. It's such a fun purse to make. I do hope you give it a try. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.